Billy Pilgrim was a funny-looking young man. He was born in 1922 in the town of Ilium, New York. Billy, after he finished high school, he went to the Ilium School of Optometry. After that, he was drafted into the United States military for the World War II. He was then sent to South Carolina to be, become a chaplain's assistant, and later sent to Luxembourg, into, where he was in the Battle of Bulge later on in Belgium. Billy's father died of a hunting accident while he was overseas. In Belgium, when war in Europe was at its full blow, and Billy, with his partner, were swiftly, to, were swiftly going through German battlefields. Later on, Billy was in a, in a cramped in a railway cart because he was taken prisoner in, by, the, by some Germans. He was sent to a prisoner of war camp where he met some Englishmen that were in the midst of a, mis a misunderstanding with the Red Cross. Thanks to the extra food that they had received from the Red Cross, the Englishmen were able to give the Americans a feast, which gave the Americans some stomach problems, including diarrhea. Because of that and stomach problems, um, Billy had to give, be given a shot of morphine. After that, they were in the great city of Dresden over in Germany, where they had to work, um, where they had to work at a malt syrup factory. And taking any malt syrup was punishable. Later on, the city of Dresden was bombed by Americans. 130,000 people died. Billy was the, was able to survive with some other amongst other Americans and a couple of Germans in Slaughterhouse Five, which was a which was the meat meat locker below a slaughterhouse. When they got out, there were corpses in the rubble, and they had to dig their way out. It was horrifying, and it scarred Bill, Billy for the rest of his life. After this, Billy's involvement in the war had ended. He had served his duty and went back to finish his studies in Ilium. Once Billy was finally in, Bil in Ilium, he was engaged to Valencia, the obese daughter of the owner of the, of the optometry school in Ilium. Later on, Billy had a breakdown because of the stuff he had seen, so he was taken to a veteran's hospital. He was then introduced to science fiction and became obsessed with the author Kilgore Trout. Who does not write very well. Later on, we realized that Billy had himself realized he wouldn't have to work very hard for the rest of his life because he was now married to Valencia. And because her father was very rich, he wouldn't have to work as hard for the rest of his life as he had before. Billy and his father-in-law opened an optometry business together. Billy ran it. Billy then lived the ideal American life with a bejeweled wife, a nice home, a Cadillac, and a membership at the Lions Club. Before this moment in his life, Billy never realized he had any secrets to himself. But then on his 18th wedding anniversary, it all changed. When he saw a barbershop quartet singing, he realized he, they reminded him of a memory of Dresden. Four U.S. Army men in a horrific scene with all the corpses around them after the bombing of Dresden. And Billy had survived it thanks to him being in the Slaughterhouse Five. Later on, we go to Billy's daughter's wedding night, where Billy is kidnapped by two, two foot tall, green, hand looking aliens with an eye at their palm. They want to make, uh, kind of look like a plunger. They are called Trophimidorians. And they live in the planet of Trophimidor. And they wanted Billy as an exhibit in their zoo. Because they were curious to the 
introduced to it through the human experience. There, Billy's introduced to a woman called Montana Wildcat. She's a 16-year-old pop star in the, Uni in the United States. After spending some time together, um, they both have a baby. They have a baby together. Um, where Mon but Montana and the baby stay behind in Trophimador. Later on, but before this, Phyllis explained how the Trophimadorians see the world. They apparently see the world in a four-dimensional way, as humans only see it in a three-dimensional way. Also, their concept of time does not involve death, because in our concept of time, once somebody has gone through the stages, they're dead, but in their in, but in their world, because they can go back in time, they're not dead, because that person is still alive in their period of time. They also explain to Billy how they can how. Because they can travel back and forth in time, they choose to only see the nice moments in life. They live the good life. Billy's then returned to Earth, with Montana and the baby staying behind. He stay, he goes on he he ends up in an airplane with his father-in-law to an optometry convention in Montreal. Sadly, the plane crashes, and the only survivor is Billy. And the co pilot. On her way to the hospital, Valencia crashes into a Mercedes Benz and it damages her exhaust system, killing her with, a, with, her, with, her, with carbon monoxide. Later on, Billy's taken back home by his daughter protected by a nurse but Billy does not listen to the nurse and does not respect her uh, does not respect her daughter's decision of, of him having a nurse so he escapes to go to New York City where he wants to show up in a radio talk show to talk about his experience on Trotsmador and spread the word of the Trotsmadorians he sends a letter to the to the to a small newspaper which angers his daughter because she no longer knows what to do with him. Billy recorded himself, taping himself, explaining the death, explaining the death uh, of him. He is shot by a by a he's shot by a gunman who is hired by a man who seeks revenge because Billy is the reason that he's that he, his friend is dead. Billy then realized time doesn't matter, and he relives his life many, 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 many times.